Max and I could not be more pumped up to bring you Emmanuel Shu today, and he's uh, he's right over. I think he's the that other way. way. Yeah, I'm that over way. here. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, what what I want to do on this stream is I want to show everyone the new kit, and then we're gonna switch over to Eman's screen, and he's gonna walk us through kind of his process and how he made how he made this cover image. So this is Warzone, and it was uh, modeled out by the talented Josh Cart Cotter. He's a badass, and he's done a bunch of our kits. He did Neo Tokyo, Art Deco, Gothic, and then this one. So you can see just like a couple of the pieces. We, we have larger buildings in the background. What I like about these is you can uh, rotate them around to get, if you wanted to get a couple of different buildings, you can, you can just rotate them because each side has a different kind of silhouette or a different kind of destruction happening on them. Then we have these kind of like larger office buildings in the back. Again, same thing, like rotating them around gives you different pieces and silhouettes of destruction. And we kind of go from like big buildings to medium buildings, then to just like complete rubble, you know, just like collapsed buildings, and then over to just like piles. And then on top of that, you know, we, we have these smaller detail pieces of, um, you know, like rebar and concrete that, that you can kind of use to add more, even more rubble if you want to. Um, or like street rubble and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, on top of that, we have a couple walls with rebar, pillars with rebar, and then uh, like roof shingles. And it wouldn't be like a proper post-apocalyptic kit without some sort of like freeway signs and stop signs. It's very like Book of Eli uh, to just have like, you know, a freeway sign with just rubble around it. Um, and some freeways. So we have like collapsed freeways that you can sprinkle throughout as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Corman is in the room. What up, Steve? And he says, I am so going to use that. <laughs> What's up, Steve? Can't wait to see what you do with it. And Aaron Donda in the room says, War Kit got a nice little surprise in my inbox today. That's a good <laughs> point, Aaron. Um, if uh, if y'all do not are not on our on our um, email list, um, you can get you can do so by by uh, picking up a free sample kit right below, um, and some little surprises do come through on your uh, on your emails. And Joe Connell asks, is there a sample kit of each of the different kits you release? Um, no, there is not. Um, if the sample kits right now um, are only for contests, and right now, if you download the sample kit, you will get the Art Deco kit. Um, or you get the, a sample of the Art Deco kit. I have it in Maya right now. I basically just started, you know, it's funny because you started saying um, how your kits, you know, the, the buildings, you can look from different sides and you get different silhouettes. So that's pretty much what I did, was just try to find the best silhouette I could uh, for the different buildings. And it's got like everything in it. I mean, obviously it's like a movie set. Um, so it's not, uh, um, it's not all filled in, but when you look here, um, I really just tried to get the most interesting thing I could find in terms of silhouette, putting as many of the different things and buildings and stuff. And it was such a, it's, it's so easy. <laughs> I mean, I really, it was very easy to get a good render going. Um, I basically slapped a couple of really basic textures. It's just these four textures, uh, very, very simple, not complex at all. It's just, uh, you know, stuff I bought on like CG textures. Um, super simple. I think I threw like a quick UV, you know, like a, a, a planar map. Um, and this is with, you know, with textures. I mean, it looks like a, a mess, but it actually works really well. Um, it gives a so, really cool breakup actually to the models. Just you kind of get those like hit happy accidents in here. Yeah, because it's it's a sort of a distress set. Uh, 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 you're not expecting perfect, so that's kind of really good. And it gets all these like little repetitions and stuff like that just from the texture. And literally, it really is like uh, you know like no, that's not that's one another texture. I mean, it's super simple. You know, a couple of these textures and and we're off to the races it's, it, it, and, and I, I literally did like nothing <laughs> except like just put them in you know kind of in the right place uh, and I wanted to make sure that I, I didn't want to start doing like a, a whole ton of paint 
uh, because I wanted to see what this can do, you know, like without much work, how far I could take it. Um, so then I just, you know, I, I basically added, uh, I have some simple lights. Um, really quick, we have a question in the chat from JD Hilliard, um, which I guess we, we're kind of talking about a little bit, but he's at, he asks, how much time do you spend texturing in 3D versus Photoshop? All right, so uh, on this one, the textures you see here, uh, this is literally about 10 minutes. Well, I'll just show you. Um, it's just the easiest way. So let's see. Okay, so it's just, you know, it's just a, a simple thing of, I'm just going to say uh, add a texture, you know, like that, uh, that, pick the texture. Uh, literally, I'm just gonna pick whatever comes up. So, so I have assigned a new texture. So I'm going to go to the attributes, uh, paste in the path. So it looks like that right now. So you know maybe this one uh, is a little too high contrast. So I might pick you know one that's more appropriate. But all I did was go in here and go planar and go, okay, well, I'm looking at from this angle, uh, which is X, I'm going to apply it. And that's the extent of it. And then I'll adjust it. So it'll be like, all right, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's how long it takes. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's literally, I mean, uh, the thing with this, set is that it's it doesn't need to be perfect so there's no point in trying to make it perfect and the way i do things is like i'll take it as far as i think it needs i'll do a quick render and i go okay that looks pretty good then i'll just fix whatever you know if there's like little things here and there i'll fix it in photoshop mm -hmm. like there's no point you know to fix all the little things you know because all like you know like like let's say this blue was like too repetitive I mean, all I need to do is is literally just come in and you know do that and that, and then now you know you know you can just break it up very easily, you know, in Photoshop, and you don't have to like customize anything. Um, but if you were to change that, then you got to paint on the texture, then you got to do oh my god, it's just a pain, you know. So I I always um, I, I mean I know by nature how much I need. Um, because I've done it for so long. So I'll just say, all right, this, that, I don't need to fix. And then I'll just, you know. I'll... So if you look at the, the this, it's really just that map, you know, with a map assigned uh, with some colors, you know, and, 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 and a lot of happy mistakes, you know, like when, like this one is just like, it just looks good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Just kind of picked the right texture, you know, and and I you know picked a couple, and I went back and forth a little bit, but it it works really well, and 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 it just, there's, I mean, you know, you can see that uh, if you go back to the 3D, if you go to the overhang, but you see there's stretching here, but yeah. see I don't really care uh, because you don't really see much of it, and even if and if you did, then I might just. You know, I might paint into it, or I may re just quickly texture. You know, like put a, a planar map on those faces. Uh, but for this purposes, it works fine. The only place where I felt like I may need more texture work is the front, because mm -hmm. um, this is that map like just everywhere. So then later on, what I did was just I actually went in and painted on it because it gives it a much more uh, painted feel um so that's that's kind of what i did but um uh, let me just run through some of the layers sure uh, uh, yeah if you have any questions just fire them out um let's see what is so i'm gonna just take that off so it, it came in at you know it's pretty dark i think um and so some of the stuff is just these layers i, I mean i use them i, I do a lot of layers uh, and they, you know, like I do lighting from different directions and all that kind of stuff. And I try to build up my lighting that way. Um, so this is just, you know, like, okay, light hitting the stuff. But that passes like like that. Gotcha. So, 
I mean, I do really customize passes so that I can choose what to reveal and what not to reveal. Um, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if that's how you do your stuff. I'm sure it's, there's some form of this. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I like to render myself out a lot of passes to, to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so then there's the front, you know, like it, I don't like things getting too inky. So um, that's just, I think it's just a, like a texture pass more, you know, like, you know, like, like I'm like, well, where is it bouncing and what's it doing? And, um, you know, like I don't want it, I, I want it to start feeling a little bit more real. So, and I do a lot of this stuff, which is the uh, layer adjustments, uh, because I'm, I make, I try to make as good masks as I can. So I can really work with isolating that map. You know, like I don't want to have to deal with the shader for five hours trying to make that right. So I was like, screw it. I just want to make it, you know, like enough so that I can um, uh, work with it in Photoshop so I don't have to spend years rendering. Um, I, I'm still not that great at rendering. So, you know, like shader making. So I, I choose to do that in Photoshop. So this is just for the mask, uh, and then the background is like, okay, knock it down, change the color a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, that's just more different passes being sneaked in there, like a foreground, you know, like a shadow color. I love how you're playing with the cool tones and the warm tones to, to create the focal point. Yeah, I was just trying to play around with that, and then this is more of the... Uh, the lighting in the foreground. This is getting rid of some of those, you know, like sort of brights that that didn't work. Like that that was taking too much attention, I thought. And then and then so this is me just quickly. So this is just paint, like um, quick blending, you would say. Mm. Um, so I'm just. You know, like all this stuff is like stretching and all this stuff. So I'm, I just took like maybe half an hour and I just kind of, just kind of just blended it all. So it doesn't, you can't really tell. Mm. Um, so from that to that. So to me, it makes a lot of difference because uh, it, it helps me uh, make things look less like CG uh, and stretched and all that. Although, you know, there's still stuff and, you know, you could spend a long time painting on something like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because that, that might be an experiment that I want to do later on. It's just, what if it, you know, what, what would you gain by painting over the whole thing and using this as a quick base, you know? Um, which but, actually brings us to a question we have in the chat, which I think this is a good, good chance to sneak it in. Um, JD Hilliard asks, uh, how long did it take, how, how long did this painting take from start to finish? Roughly half a day. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because the the thing is, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, like talking about the kid always, you know, like so, so great. But the truth is, I mean, I could literally go through uh, right now, remake the kit, remake the scene in like an hour now that I've done it because it's it's just so easy. And I mean, you can see there's, you know, like if I discount this paint layer, everything is just a render. Yeah, it doesn't take that long, and the render itself doesn't take long. So it's like, you know, it's not. I mean, the only thing was, you know, getting used to the kit, you know, positioning it. The texturing you saw was like nothing. It just throw it on there, literally minutes, and and then it's bring it. But it's knowing how you're gonna stack the layers together to make something, and you know, obviously, you know, composition leading people's eye, all that kind of stuff, you know, that, that's just, you can't put a time to that. It's just kind of, um, you know, something you, you know, you, you do, you know, however long it takes you. Yeah. But, you kind uh, of have to get in the flow for that kind of stuff. Right. And, and, you know, it's like everybody has a different sense of composition and what they're trying to say, but this kit itself, it's just so easy. I mean, I had to do nothing. I mean, I, there were, you know, there wasn't even, I didn't even have to tweak the model at all. None of this is like this is straight the models. That's, That's so it. awesome! Hell yeah! Yeah. So uh, you know, I, I didn't use that pass. Uh, okay, so this let me <laughs> the magic pass. It's like okay, I did that, and then uh... <laughs> no, no, <laughs> like, I'm gonna break all that down. So 
So then I have a multiply because right now it's a little bit too flashed um, for no good reason. So uh, so then I I just had a little multiply layer just to make it a little darker. And then here's my I, I'm gonna I'll go one by one here. So this so usually when I do haze, I put it in a blue colored folder just because I can always just go back to that. And I don't know if you guys know that you guys can. Uh, you can just separate it by color. Uh, it's actually quite useful at times. But anyway, so uh, so then I start separating, you know, okay, what's behind. Like my focal point, obviously, I want you to look at, like, what's this helmet thing doing there and why is it in rubble and what happened to this place. So, you know, I'm, I have this haze uh, that's kind of a little colored, uh, warm. And then I, I, I want to start popping out areas. Like I noticed that this was a really cool area, but it was really getting lost. And then I didn't want to see sort of these hard lines uh, right here, because that's a really kind of odd tangent. Um, and it just helps to kind of push it out of the way, just a little bit there. And then this is to, to, to flash the other areas that are too inky. And then we're back to like, here where this is sort of dusty um, smoky stuff a little bit here just to separate these beams and those overall flash and then when you do something as atmospheric it's always going to be a struggle to uh, how much detail is in the background sometimes you know in this atmosphere's perspective with this amount of atmosphere maybe you would get less but then I wanted to make sure it wasn't just you know, like you didn't see any detail either. So uh, it's this ba fine balance of trying to push it together. And then this is just um, overall like color. And then I wanted to add this thing kind of breaking through. Um, and then color adjustment and then final just a levels, you know, I, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to keep it really, really, really basic. I, I didn't want to, you know, do a lot of really tricky uh, this and that, you know, I wanted to see what the kit could do pretty much on its own without going uh, too far. But I mean, the way it was modeled and stuff, it really caught light well. I, I was actually really surprised because if you look here, I don't know if you can, can, can you see my cursor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when you look like here, it really catches the light really well. And that's just like one stupid texture, uh, which is. Um, let me just load it. Yeah, it's this this texture. It's just this. Uh, I, I another another texture from I think CG textures or something. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's there's it's nothing really. But then uh, what I like about this texture is that it has a lot of different colors. Uh, not like super in your face, but uh, you know it had a lot of different colors and detail and. It also had some of its own distressing and dirt, and it just completely worked awesome because that's it right there. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it worked so well. I mean, that this is it right there. It's got a lot of nice breakup, you know. And I could see like you could, you know, for a film, I might just take it a couple notches further in terms of like paint and you know might float some stuff. But I mean. You know, you might break some of this repetition, but that's it. I mean, look look at the, how that came through. It just adds so much. You know, it's perfect. I mean, I, I that's why this doesn't really take much time uh, to do. I mean, it's not like a perfect, uh, uh, like Neo Tokyo might be harder uh, because you'd have to shade it right to make it look right. Um, this is more of a distressed, uh, you know, destroyed city. Uh, so texturally, you know, adding texture is going to just help so much. Uh, but it caught light really. I mean, my thing is like, how does it work in lighting? Because that's what I love. And so when I was doing the lighting, I was like, wow, it's just there's so many ways to light this scene. <laughs> um, it was just really a lot of fun. I think I that's just, one of the big reason. things with the models that like, you know, we, we're not going super, super high poly, but really we just want to put the geometry in there that's needed to be able to catch light in an interesting way. Like that's really what these 3D models are all about, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, there's so much more uses. I mean, I haven't even gotten to editing any of this. Like I could totally like 
you know, crop out or, or take out some of the polys for certain things. And, you know, like this is just using it as is. I could see that you could totally uh, make a whole city and break stuff up. And, you know, it would be so useful to do that. But that's, you know, that's exploring it. Like you, you, there's infinite possibilities. I just feel like, you know, you could play all day. If, if you know, if you wanted to do like for me, if I had an, if I had this when I was working on Terminator, I would have used this. Like I wouldn't have even thought about it because it would have been perfect. Um, it's just that, you know, there wasn't such a thing. And so then, you know, it's photo bashing. Then you're limited to your angles and all this kind of stuff and finding the right reference, uh, which, you know, you should always have good reference, but you, you know, it's really hard. If I wanted to change the angle, I couldn't do that. Tim Miller, if you're ever watching this, you're welcome. We just gave a kit so that you can have endless amounts of concept artists <laughs> working on your project. <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't worry about things, you know, like if you ever wonder if things would look the same because there's so much possibility in making this something completely not like, you know, uh, somebody else's work. I mean, right now this is what it is in its basic form, but it, it can turn into something completely different. I mean, as you saw, you know, with some of the other kits that, are, you know, like you could turn it on the side, buildings can fall down, you can create, you know, holes, you can do a lot of editing to the geometry that I haven't done yet, you know, and that's just going to make it so cool. What I like about it is you, you definitely hit it, but you also created like the idyllic image of a destroyed city that I haven't seen before, but like when I think of a destroyed city, your image now becomes like the perfect example of what that should look like, you know? It, it, yeah, like, I mean, it sets I, yeah. the new bar. I just, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want, yeah, I didn't want to, you know, like kind of do another like, oh, you know, here's a spaceship destroyed <laughs> thing, you know, like I, I just wanted to do something that was just straightforward. I mean, it's a destroyed city. There's something there. I don't know what it is. Um, uh, you know, like some sort of thing and a helmet thing, uh, something. I mean, I, I mean, I'm always, you know, wanting to put more stuff in, like uh, storytelling elements. And it's actually kind of interesting to take it back a little bit and to kind of, um, you know, to kind of not to, to have that limitation is actually kind of interesting. Um, so, uh, I, but I wanted something that didn't look like completely fantasy or, you know, like just something you might, you know, you might see in the, in the film, you know, quite possibly, you know, what, what I always love, um, regardless of like what, what the environment is or what the story is, is the composition choices and the shape language that someone uses. Like that's always for me the most interesting part of a painting is like I don't care what what's the actual subject matter I care about how the artist is moving an eye around a canvas, and I think you've yeah. done that so beautifully. Like you know you have this sun in the background that's hitting this billboard that has the lines drawing you to the helmet, and the eye line looking at this beautiful little corner uh, on the right side that then leads you straight back up to the sun. And you create this like beautiful circle that keeps your eye just circling around this painting. And you do it in a very, very creative way. Yeah, it, 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 it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you know, the truth is even without that helmet, I think it would probably just be the same. It wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> but but um, the, it gives it a little character, a little story to it, which, which, is, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, this is just, it was just fun to do. I mean... I've been exploring lately a little bit like, okay, how much paint do I do? How much 3D do I do? You know, if I'm using, you know, all these GPU rendering solutions, you know, should I just kind of go more 3D, you know, like, and, and, and paint less, you know, well, what's, what's my strategy, you know? So, um, but you know, if you want to do that, you have to have the asset. And if you don't have the assets, you know, for me, it's like having the asset, having the program, having the textures, those three things you have them, then you can do that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then it's gonna be just like, okay, trying to make things work. Um, and this was just fun to do. I mean, you know, when you're like, destroyed city, I was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. That's awesome. It, it, it would be harder to do if it was, uh, uh, not harder, but it would just be different because I was in this kind of mindset. I was like, wow, this could be cool. 
because I, I, I could totally see mixing the, this and say like the Neo Tokyo kit because then you've got some part of the city that's not destroyed and some of the buildings for that, you know, and how does that work? And then how, you know, it's, it's, there's just so, it's like kind of endless, the possibilities. Well, actually, we have, we have one question in from DJ in VT and says, uh, could you explain what the top set of hidden layers in the PSD are? Are they masks or selections of some kind? Yeah, well, no, this, this is the uh, crop right here um, that I set myself just so that I know, you know, how, how it's going to look. Um, and then uh, these are masks, yeah. These are just, like, I, I can't survive without these. <laughs> and and V-Ray does it, I don't like the way it does it right now because there's only three colors. <laughs> but th these are just masks that I set differently so that I can just go in there and tweak things in a very specific way. But yeah, I mean, that this is really pretty much the working file. I mean, there's nothing more. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's one of my simpler files. I'm like, oh man, this is pretty simple. <laughs> what, I, what I love about seeing um, files like this is um, it shows when someone's in the rhythm of painting, right? Like, because if you spend like a really long time on a painting and you get out of the rhythm, like usually you'll like go back and merge things down or group them and stuff like that. But if you're like feeling the painting and just like, oh, I see something else and like painting here and jumping somewhere else, then um, I feel like your PSD looks like your thought process where it's kind of like. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically, all right, let me get to a good, you know, basic level and then let me put some haze and atmosphere and lighting and mood. Okay, done. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's a lot simpler than what people think. You know, they a lot of people are like, well, I mean, you know, what I have to stress this here is is about making the image, right? It's about what is this image about? How does it convey in terms of mood and composition? Uh, and keeping it simple. Uh, it, you don't have to get all complex and crazy. You know, just, just keep it simple. Uh, and if, if you need, you know, find reference, you know, and, and, and look at, for this, I was looking at, you know, some kind of sun breaking through smoke and, you know, like debris, clouds and stuff like that. And I needed it, so don't be afraid to do it. But I mean, the thing is just keep it simple. It's that simple. Just keep it simple. And as you can see, it's not a lot of stuff. You know, if you're any at all 3D savvy, which I think if you bought the kit, you would be at least somewhat savvy, use these kind of techniques to just kind of layer and customize but not don't belabor the point in 3d because if you if you wanted to texture this building perfectly and make sure none of this repetition was there it's going to take you hours you know if i was to just do that and that and then that you know that now i'm i'm getting rid of the repetition i might float a photo over it i might do whatever you know, I might break these, you know, like hard corners, you know, of, or lines. I don't know, my graphics card is here. It, like, you, you know, you might just break it up a little bit. Just, you know, when you look at this far, it makes a difference. But what am I going to do? Remodel that? Retexture that? I'm not going to do that. So you need to know when to come into Photoshop to do that stuff. And that, to me, you know, it's like, it's like these highlights, right? So these highlights right there just... You know, like that looks pretty CG. That looks less CG. Yeah, completely. Just that little breakup on there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that's what you use too, right? I mean, you, this is just a very common technique. This is a lot of, I think a lot of people just don't realize how useful it is to do that. And I think a lot of people are afraid of the paintbrush, especially if you're comfortable with 3D. You, you might be a little afraid to like grab a textured brush in Photoshop and just make a couple marks. But I think as soon as you just kind of let go of that and, and embrace the medium and kind of just like, you know, just get in there and, and get a little dirty with it, you start to open up this world of being able to work quickly to break things up. Like the marks I just made, like like these marks right now, I'm painting with the mouse. It's not about paint. It's, it's really just about saying, ah, that, that line, I don't like. And then just, that's it. I mean, I, it's nothing, you know, like... I don't have this super technique, you know, painter thing, you know, like if you, you know, if you want to change that silhouette, you know, there you go, you know, that's a different silhouette. And it's, this is, I'm using a mouse right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, oh, that line is too, too much. Okay. Well then take it down. You know, that's it. It's a decision. And if you make those decisions, 
uh, it's about making the right decisions. If you know how to make those right decisions, you'll know how to tweak your image. That's the main thing for me. And using this technique uh, and having the right assets just makes it all work. Let, let me catch us up on some of these questions that are stacking up. Dondatron asks, uh, does the idea formulate pretty quickly for you when playing with the kits or is it premeditated? Well, for, for the kit, this one, I was trying to come up with different ideas. So I guess you could say it's kind of premeditated, but then I got into the kit and then I, it just kind of presented itself because when you have, it's like when you're young, when you have like a bunch of toys and, and stuff and blocks and you just kind of go, oh, okay, that's the scene. And then you look at it and, you know, you just kind of get into it. So it's kind of a little bit of both. I mean, I, I'd say that for me, it was playing with it that got me the furthest. Did you, um, just to, like my own question off of that, did you kind of go into it with the idea of the, of the angle you wanted to do, of like doing this kind of looking down angle up at these destroyed buildings, or was that something you found once you had kind of built a base layout and were playing with different camera angles? I, I wanted to do a story moment where it was this, uh, you know, something was left behind from somebody uh, you know, f and then I was like, well, how would I show that best? I'm like, well, overhead doesn't really show it. Uh, you know, like, oh, but, you know, okay. So I thought, well, I, I, I tend to like things, you know, getting down low and up close. <laughs> I mean, that's just kind of, I like that. So I tried that and I, you know, really liked it. But, you know, I, so this is just my frame buffer um, render from, you know, I, I was, this was when I first opened the kit. And and I thought, well, what if I did a, you know, it's underwater and, uh, you know, I started getting all like crazy again, you know, and I was like, no, you got to stop because it's <laughs> the thing is, it would have worked really well. The problem is uh, I was having problems with the V-Ray fog. Uh, it was it's just to me is kind of counterintuitive. And I didn't like how it was working. So I was like, screw this. I'm going back to what I know because I just don't have time to R&D this thing. But I was like, well, what if, you know, it's kind of like this Titanic shot. Um, so this was a quick sort of render. Um, but, you know, it just shows, you know, like how I, I, I loved how it caught light. I was just like, oh, that looks really good. Um, but I was like, yeah, I can't. I, I can't. That's <laughs> just can't, awesome. Man. Well, that's a challenge um, out to you, Twitch viewers. Uh, do an underwater destroyed city scene. and Yeah, because I was like, well, what if, you know, the, the, the whole thing about, you know, what we do, I mean, in the end, it's not about modeling, texturing, rendering, lighting, or painting. It's about the idea. If you have a crappy idea that no one wants to see, then it's a crappy idea. But if you have a really good idea, then it's just a way of making that happen. And I think, you know, I, was, I always, whenever I'm doing anything, I just think to myself, well, what if it was... What do I want to see? And, you know, I was like, well, you know, why not? Why couldn't this be a city that's lost, you know, and it's, you know, the water levels have risen and now you're underwater and you're rediscovering it for the first time. Yeah, that's amazing. You know? That's such a cool idea. So, uh, I mean, I was going to that route and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the constraints of, sort of, you know, a realistic constraint, right? You're like, okay, I don't. I'm having problems with the water and fog. I don't want to spend, you know, the next three, four, five days to figure it out and fail uh, when I have like a bunch of other deadlines. So, okay, well, what do I do? Can can I do something I know more that has the same impact? So that's when I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go to the tried and true, <laughs> and and also to show people like, okay, forget all the underwater, all the. Uh, stuff you know let's show something that people can identify with and recognize yeah you know because underwater you're still going to have a lot of you know like well what is that oh really mysterious maybe you won't see much of the kit because <laughs> i i also had my constraints right and and i i kind of can't, can't say I, I don't know if you say failed but i mean i kind of took it to a place where i thought was cool and i kind of lost sight of hey you know i'm trying to do a cover for you guys i mean that's the assignment <laughs> And so I went and did this thing and it was kind of showcased the Mac, but it didn't showcase the set, you know? So, you know, it's interesting for people to know, you know? For everyone who doesn't know, and you'll see it soon enough and the event's going to finish it up, but the first cover image you sent us was 
a giant crashed mech with a cat on it. <laughs> and, uh, but like, it was, it's gorgeous, but it was so much haze in the background. And it was just like, you were just staring at this like gorgeous mech. And we were like, oh, this is cool, but, but you can't see the kit. <laughs> and, and so E-Man quickly turned around and was like, oh yeah, you're totally right. Like, and got rid of the mech and then brought back the city and added the helmet. And, and it was kind of amazing how quickly you were able to take your scene and do a 180 um, and change the focal point or like change the focus of, of the story of the image. Um, but but still have the building blocks in there so you could still create a new story. Yeah, because the funny thing is, when you said that, I mean, it literally, I just sent you over a render and I said, well, this is the raw render. And you're like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, because you, what you didn't realize was there's all this information in there already. Yeah. All I had to do was show it through, yeah. It's awesome. And I feel like that's, a, it's a cool th thing. It's, it's, it's a thing I, I struggle with a lot too, is I, I usually what I'll do is, um, I'll have like the main, like I'll, I'll have a priority list, like a checklist in my head when I'm doing a client painting of like, what's, what's the main emotional beat of the story and what's the, what's the main question that I'm answering with this painting. And, mm -hmm. and then those two are the things that I'm like, okay, every decision I make, cause like you said, like every part of this painting is just making a decision. And, and if you don't have a clear focus or goal, it becomes really hard to make those decisions. Cause you're like, oh, does this, you know, antenna at the top of this building need to be this long or shorter? Or like, where do I put this? But if you have like your clear story beat and your clear focus and emotion in mind, then every decision you can weigh against, well, what is the goal? And is this helping me or hurting me in towards that goal? Yeah, I mean, and it's just, in the end, it really is just a bunch of decisions. Just make sure it's an image that speaks to you and then you can make it work. I mean, I think we're all kind of in the same, you know, same thing. I mean, and, and it's just, it was just so easy. I mean, yeah. I literally just turned it around and I was like, hmm, Dude, no problem. I, yeah, and I love it. Like, um, you know, I think this kit, like the, the goal of the kit is to get people excited about the environment and, and the stories that they can make with this environment. And this hits it so hard because it gives you like a little sneak peek of like this piece and then this whole environment that's surrounding it that's kind of telling the, the, the story of this helmet, you know? They could make like a mega building, you know, with four buildings together. They could do so much stuff. It's just not even funny. I mean, I'd love to, I, I would be very curious to see what people do with this. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite part about Kit Bash is just watching what, what people make with these things. E-Man, uh, VFX Daily says, what do you use for your base textures in 3D? Do you have a resource you use a lot? CGtextures.com, question mark. Well, right now I use CG textures, um, but I, there's a lot of times where I'll shoot my own um, just because, you know, you, you can't get better than shooting your own textures. Uh, you know exactly what you want, but CG textures is a good place, you know, if I am in a pinch. Rajanana Depu, I totally butchered your name and I'm sorry. Um, he says, what's your rendering time for this scene in V-Ray? I, I have the RT renderer, the real-time renderer, and I render until I think it looks fine. Like, I'll be like, okay, that's I can deal with that much noise. So I'm really not very precise when it comes to rendering uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm a, don't forget, I'm a concept guy, so having noise is fine. You know, sometimes it even works in your favor because it, it, it actually looks good. These renders usually take maybe, I would say, five minutes or less. I have no patience. I cannot deal with things that take more than that because I'm just sitting there looking because it, it reminds me of when I used to be, like when I worked at ILM or, you know, like this is like 15, 20 years ago and you're basically you set renders and we go get coffee and it's like that for every render. It's just I can't deal with that so you know I just I really let it cook as much as I think okay stop I, I can work with it right there <laughs> so these renders took most of all my renders take less than five minutes oh wow that's awesome I mean depend I mean you know this could you know with a little bit of paint a little bit of photo bash you know this could be in a for a film it could it could literally be a matte painting you know, I, I don't think it needs to take very long, you know? Yeah, I don't think it would take that much to turn, take this from concept to map painting, honestly. 
Yeah, I, I feel like it would just be like so much of that is there already that it's just like a little photo bashing on top and a little more time with the painting. And this yeah. concept could become a map painting, no problem. Yeah, I, that's why I'm like, you know, I don't know that the renders would, I mean, probably would have worked with just these renders. You just have to do work over it, that's all. Yeah, yeah. I want to throw a shout out. JD Hilliard just posted a, a, a new site I've never heard of, but E-Man, you're, you're going to dig this. It's called uh, Polygon, P-O-L-I-I-G-O-N.com. And uh, it's a oh. texture website. And dude, it, this looks this looks good. Like I will be using this. Oh um, wow! Yeah, I'm definitely be doing this. Are now. you seeing this right now? Like, yeah, yeah, I just loaded it. Yeah. This is awesome. Hell yeah! Um, yeah, thanks for showing that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, guys. thank you for sharing this. It's I, I love when we can find new sites like this, um, and these textures look great. Yeah, no, that's awesome. J D Hilliard, man. Leave it to that guy. E-Man, I can't thank you enough for, for doing a killer killer um, cover image and, and for, for walking us all through it because it's so cool to see your process. Yeah, no problem, man. I mean, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I uh, had a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, hopefully there will be more to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. DJ asks, do we have other kits in the pipeline that we should know about? Um, DJ, if you are not on our email list um, or you've not gotten a sample kit, um, do that so you will you will stay informed. Um, but we do put out um, a new kit just about every month. Yeah, we share with us what you make. We, we want to see you guys do some creative stuff. And the challenge out there to y'all is uh, on this stream is I want to see who's the first person to do the underwater yeah, let's see that, man. <laughs> yeah, the unpursued E-Man idea of, of an underwater destroyed And city. if nobody does it, I might just have to pursue it. <laughs> oh, snap. Beat him to the punch, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, um, great talking to you guys. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, E-Man. And, uh, and thank you, everyone on the chat, for joining us. I'm going to echo some huge gratitude towards the E-Man, the one and only, um, to everyone else out in the stream. Awesome. Sweet guys, have an amazing day, and uh, right. we'll talk to you later. Later. Bye. Yep.